Hi, Karen. Please come in. Hi. What did you want to talk to me about? I imagine it's Jackson's. Yes. As you know, we have to talk about the meeting we've planned with them. Have you got the price calculations I asked for? Yes. And I also brought the quote so we can check the details. Great. That's exactly what I need. We'll have to set a target price and a maximum price in order to give us some room to negotiate. Mm. The price shown in the quote isn't too bad. But did you take a look at the delivery and payment terms? Yes, I did. Not quite what we expected. We usually get better conditions and payment terms, as well as a discount on large quantities. Yes. In fact, all our other suppliers have improved their discounts to us this year. What are our preferred delivery and payment terms? Sorry, but I'll have to look at the figures again. You'll have them in a day or two. As for the payment terms, I would prefer to talk to accounts first, if that's OK with you. OK. Let me know when you have all the details. No problem. You know, we had such a good relationship with our old Chinese suppliers. Yes. They were always polite and delivered on time until they were taken over by that new company. Yes, I know. Well, I hope we manage to work well with the new people. Oh, by the way, have we set a date for our internal meeting yet? Adrian and Mirja have both agreed on the 24th of June. Adrian needs a little more time to check the delivery times. Mirja will join us to give us more information about Jackson's, since she did the research on them before we contacted them. She thinks that they really need more customers for their new business line. OK, the 24th sounds good to me. What about Frank? Frank is waiting for the final quality report, but he expects it on the 22nd. OK, fine. Anything else? Oh, I'll chair the meeting with their sales team. But I need someone to take the minutes of the meeting and an additional person as backup on that day. Could you check when you're available? Mm -hmm. If you let me know by the 18th, we can set a date to meet them then. No problem. By the way, did you hear about... Unit 1. Exercise 8. Frank, I don't believe you have met Mirja, have you? Mirja is our new company secretary. Mirja, Frank is our quality control expert. He works in the research department. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Oh, and this is Karen. She's my assistant. OK, so we're all here. Now let's check that we have all the information we need. Frank? Actually, Tasha, I have an appointment with the auditors in 20 minutes. Is it OK with you if I start? OK, well, I suppose so. What can you tell us about Jackson's? Well, uh, they're an old established company. They were founded in 1905 and have always had a great reputation for good quality. They've even won a prize at the main trade fair every year for the last 10 years. I heard they're a bit old-fashioned. Yes, Frank, they are a family company, which is unusual today, and the current CEO is the grandson of the founder. He's only 35 years old, uh, studied engineering and even has a doctorate. That's probably why the whole company is based around their research and development division. In fact, that is their strength, and they comply with all the latest engineering standards. What about their finances? Well, as far as I can see, they're completely up to date and have filed all their accounts up to now. Unfortunately, though, they have not been making much profit over the last three years, and they had to let some of their key workers go because of fewer customers and orders. Mm. Therefore, I think price will be an important issue for them, as well as payment terms. This could also be why they're interested in developing in China. Interesting. Currently, their volume of exports is small, since most of their customers are near their offices. However, there was recently an article by their new sales director, David Hallam, in one of the trade newspapers. He said he was very keen on developing their presence in the Asian market. I heard they were having financial problems. Uh, Tasha, are you sure you want to do business with them? Hmm, that really depends on your quality report and anything else Mirja has to say. The article says they took part in a delegation that went to China. Jackson's, it seems, have set up a joint venture with a local partner. We would be mostly dealing with the Chinese branch of the business, I think, and they have a good reputation. In fact, According to the article, the company has received a lot of large orders for the coming year. Of course, we'll have to be sure that they could deliver on time. 
However, I think we should try to do business with them. Oh, Tasha, I'm really sorry, but I must go now. You'll have a copy of my report on your desk tomorrow morning. Thanks, Major. Now, Frank, about the quality report. Unit 2. Exercise 6. Hello, Harold Gosling speaking. Hello, Harold. Have you sent me the agenda? I can open my emails, so could you please read the points out to me? Of course. I've left the venue open, as you wanted, and used the 18th of February as the date and included Johannes as a participant? Perfect. Now the bullet points. Firstly, the usual apologies, then corporate center... No. I want the appointment of the public relations consultant to come next. Okay. Secondly, the appointment of public relations consultant, then corporate centers... No, Harold. You've forgotten that the marketing department should be near the top. Okay. Thirdly, marketing department. Can I put corporate centers next? No, no, not yet. I want notification of customers next, and then corporate centers. Let's get all our important points at the top. After corporate centers, I've put branch closures, then advertising and corporate image and branding. Yes, and finally? Well, I have call centers, then computers, and finally AOB. It would be better to swap the call centers and the computers around. Then it's fine. Do you want to check the agenda again? No, just send it off as soon as it's finished. Jeff can sign it. Unit 2, Exercise 8. Hello, Oracle Bank. Mary Jellicoe speaking. How can I help you? Hello, Ms Jellicoe. Uh, Shirley Smithson from Dominion's Bank here. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Fine. I'm calling to arrange the meeting and discuss the agenda. Do you have any more points? Yes, I do. Have you received the agenda? Yes, I have. We suggested the 11th of February at 9am. The time is acceptable, but we can't make the 11th as Mrs DeVita will be away until the 16th. How about the 18th of February at 9am? Is that OK? I think that will be fine. I will confirm that later, though. Any other points? No, but can we move public relations up the agenda? Yes, that should be fine. I will move it to after the apologies for absence. OK? Fine. However, some other things also need moving as they go together with the public relations issue. Uh, for example, customer notification, branding and advertising. OK. And is adding the company car issue OK with you? Yes. Oh, and all the points on computers can be combined. They are lower priority. But redundancy payments should come after the closure of the corporate centres. No problem. So, we have agreed on the date, the 18th of February, and the time, 9am, in our boardroom here at Oracle. Um, I'll check and confirm the date and time of the meeting in writing. So, could you redo the agenda as discussed and email it to me? Of course. I'll do it as soon as possible. Unit 3. Exercise 4. Joanna Duncan, books to go. How can I help you? Hello, Joanna. Mark Taylor from Bookmark here. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Very well, thanks. Um, have you received the revised agenda, Joanna? Yes, I have. It was in my inbox this morning. Great. Should we go ahead on this basis? Actually, our sales director has reminded us that we need to discuss pricing policy as well, because last Yes, time... right. Of course, we'll need to speak about that as well. But can we discuss that at a later meeting? Well, it will affect the advertising. You see, this point is important to us because we often need to cut prices dramatically to promote sales. Oh, uh, yes, I see. Um, how about putting pricing, then, before advertising? Oh, 
okay. Thanks, Mark. That's a good idea.、Mm-hmm. And what about the other arrangements? Um, everything else is fine, Mark. So I look forward to meeting you in London. Same here, Joanna. See you on the thirteenth. Goodbye. Bye. Unit three, exercise nine, the meeting at Bookmarks. Brian, this meeting is vital to us. If we can get a quick agreement, it will help with sales. They're at an all-time low this month, and that makes it hard to pay the bills. Yes, Rachel, our customer base is starting to cause big problems. If we don't get some new and especially younger customers, we'll have many more problems in the future. If we'd thought of this earlier, we would have already been able to improve sales. So, if we increase the range of stock available, that should help. However, I would prefer to only take on their better quality titles. To be honest, I think BTG have problems too, but after this first meeting, I think we'll be in a better position to make decisions. Okay, so let's work on our goals for the meeting first. Fine. So we want them to help organise a joint website. Yes, and if they do that and contribute to the costs. Will we also have access to their catalogue of self-help and business development books? Yes, we will. But we should make that our offer in exchange, and not let them see that it's something we need.、Uh, we'll just say if they work with us on the website, we'll let them sell their books in our stores. Oh, I get it. That is a plus for them, but actually, it's our main target. <laughs> That's the idea. The meeting at Books to Go. Is the website ready yet? Not yet, Val. I haven't paid the last invoice, so the designer has stopped work on it. What's the idea here, George? The website is vital for our future, and we have the money.、Mm. Look, Val. I want to wait until after the meeting. We might get some money out of bookmarks. However, if we say we've already covered all the costs, they might not want to contribute. Right, George. I understand. So we have to pretend that the website is still an idea, not already designed. That's it. And anyway, adding their content will slow the designer down. I'll take our original designs to show them. That should do it. Okay, but we must get our books into their market. I know their standards are very high, but English language books are selling well in Europe at the moment, especially self-help and language learning titles. Agreed, Paul. I'll hold out for a good deal on our list of non-fiction. If they give us that, I won't insist on including fiction as well, or perhaps only the women's titles. That list is huge. Great idea, Val. Unit three, exercise eleven. Hello, Mr. Stevens. It's very nice to see you again. May I introduce you to my colleague Brian Newson? He's our operations director. How do you do, Mr. Newson? Very pleased to meet you. I don't think you've met Dennis Griffith. Dennis is our website expert. He's been advising us on developing our online presence. How do you? How do you? It's a pleasure to meet you. How long have you been in the internet field? For about ten years now. I used to work for Mega Online in New York.、Uh, by the way, please call me Dennis. Thanks. You can call me Joseph. Ah, I think we should take our seats now. It's time to begin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats around the table. Unit four, exercise one. Jason, I'm not sure if it's. I really am not. Excuse me, everyone. Can I ask you to come back to our agenda, please? Okay. Let's focus on the next item on the agenda, which is the delivery time and terms. Jason, over to you. Thank you, Richard.、Uh, Marcy, the initial offer states an average production time of fifteen working days for the material.、Uh, this seems to be a bit long, since we also have to add four working days for transportation. Would it be possible to deliver in ten working days plus transportation time? Hmm. The lengthy delivery time is due to the quantity you're looking at. We require two working days to set up the production line. At least ten working days for the production run, one day for the agreed quality checks, and one day for loading. Well, then, is a shorter production time feasible at all? 
Jason, I assume you're referring to our shift system. Well, we are currently working a two-shift day and could possibly extend to a third shift, but that would result in a price increase due to additional staff costs. It would take about six days off the delivery time, though. Hmm. Uh, Richard, what's your opinion? For the time being, let's make a note of it. However, are there any alternatives? An alternative would be partial shipments at seven-day intervals. Uh, sorry, Marcy, but on an ex-works basis, that would increase the delivery costs dramatically. May I interrupt? Sure. Marcy, can I have a word with you, please? Is it okay with you if we take a short break? Of course. Is five minutes enough? Yes, more than enough. I think you might. Yes, I, I, I do think so. I think it for the overnight. Thank the you for your patience. Mm. Tell me, how much material can be stored here at your warehouse? We have storage capacity for two full container loads in our warehouse at the moment. Um, why do you want to know? Well. If it were possible to also store a third, then we could deliver the overall amount in three shipments of three containers instead of four shipments of two containers spread out over the year. The added benefit is that it would save time and, due to the increased overall amount, also money. Uh, well, Marcy, you certainly have given Craig and me something to think about. Um, Richard, maybe we can discuss this over lunch, hmm? Marcy, shall we break for lunch now? That's fine with me. How about the rest? OK, listen up. Um, shall we meet back here at 2pm to continue as we... Unit 4, Exercise 7. That's right. This morning we talked about earlier delivery, part shipment, an additional shift and increased order quantities. We've looked at each alternative very carefully. We are unable to accept a third shift. Well, I guessed you wouldn't want that because of the increase in price. Mm. However, it is a solution if there is a major increase in demand which needs to be met quickly. At the moment, that's not going to happen. But uh, who knows? There is also the possibility of shipping the goods at intervals. What do you think of that? Unfortunately, that's not an option either, because once again we would be looking at a price increase. Transport is really getting more and more costly these days. True, but that depends then on which forwarder you use. Maybe I would be able to help you negotiate a very good price with our forwarder. Would you like me to try? I'm sure he'll be interested in dealing with you. Of course, if you think you can do that. But we would have to look at that again at a later date, though. OK, I've made a note of it and we'll let you know. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, good. Now, uh, Craig wants to discuss the final proposal with you. Craig. Mm. Your question was about storage capacity. Um, maybe we can do it. We've checked and with a little careful planning, we could store three containers. Good to hear. However, I have another suggestion. There is also the possibility of adjusting order quantities according to your needs. Let's say three containers in one shipment as discussed, two in another or even four if necessary. This would be okay as long as we stick to the overall order quantities we agreed to. Mm, that's a nice offer, but we can't store four containers unless we build another warehouse, and that means no. Mm. Still, ordering two containers is an alternative, should there be any changes. Unit 4, Exercise 14. Can we reduce transportation time by sea freight from six to four weeks? Is there a possibility to reduce transportation time by sea freight from six to four weeks? It is impossible to reduce the transportation time because of the shipping routes used. Do you think we can have a further discount of 2.5%? Is it conceivable that we could have a further discount of 2.5%? Unfortunately, that cannot be done because of the price for raw materials at the moment. Is the price increasing on the commodities market? 
Is it possible that the price will increase on the commodities market? It could be that the price will increase this year. Will there be a shortage of container space on ships in the near future? Do you think that there will be a shortage of container space on ships in the near future? I consider it to be a possibility because the volume of exports is rising. Is the exchange rate staying at its current level? Can it be expected that the exchange rate will stay at its current level? It is hardly likely to stay at its current level due to the continued decline of the dollar. Are you opening another production plant? Could it well be that you are opening another production plant? We can rule out the possibility of opening another production plant because there are no suitable properties available. Unit 5, Exercise 1 Yes, this is very encouraging and I'm looking forward to seeing the figures for the third and fourth quarter. Now, let's talk about you, Dwight. You have been with us for a long time. Yes, for over 15 years, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. It is certainly a challenging but satisfying job. I'm very glad to hear it. Well, I have read the proposal you forwarded me, and I have to say, though, that a pay increase of 10% is out of the question. You know you are already at the top of the pay scale. To be honest, Mr. Yamamoto, that is really rather disappointing. You know we are talking about my first pay raise in more than four years. I have managed to acquire a lot of new customers and increase order volume with existing customers. Surely that deserves recognition, doesn't it? Dwight, I strongly believe that we can come to an agreement. Unfortunately, though, I just cannot agree to 10%. I can defend an increase of 4% to the members of the board, but that is really as far as I'm willing to go. 4%? That's not a great deal, is it? Dwight, there is a simple explanation for this. If you remember, none of the staff have had a pay raise in the last four years because business had been very difficult. Bonus payments were also suspended. And as you know, last year we awarded a pay raise of 2.5% to our workforce. This year, we will finally be able to reactivate the bonus system. So, you see, if we agree on 4%, you will receive a higher pay raise than everyone else. Hmm. What do you mean by a higher pay raise? The next staff pay raise is due in August. And if they negotiate 1.5% for the next 12 months... I will only break even and not have gained anything. Well, I did mention that we are going to reactivate the bonus system. That would certainly be an increase in pay. So, if I understand you correctly, you're telling me that I can take it or leave it. Dwight, I'm sorry, but 4% is the best I can do. Mr. Yamamoto, if we can't agree on more than 4%, how about looking at additional perks? Yes. That would be an alternative. Okay. Okay. I feel we should continue this conversation once you have come up with some options. Send me your proposals and we talk again. I'm confident we can work this out. Okay, fine. Thank you, Mr. Yamamoto. Bye now. Goodbye. Hmm. This is awkward. Unit 5. Exercise 9. A. Let's get down to business. B. In my opinion, that sounds like an option. C. It would certainly be an alternative to... D. We have two possibilities, but could you imagine... E. So far, we have established three alternatives. F. We were able to work things out. Unit 5, Exercise 10 Ah, good morning, Mr. Yamamoto. How are you? Fine, thanks. How are you, Dwight? 
Very well, but very busy. You always are, Dwight. You always are. Let's get down to business then. I've considered your proposals. Would you like to give me some more details? Of course. I could well imagine that the additional monthly payment into the pension scheme is beneficial to Nakatomi because the payments are fully tax deductible. Yes, in my opinion, that sounds like an option. It would increase your pension when you retire. How about the private use of a company car? I cannot see the advantage there. The company pays insurance, tax, fuel, and maintenance on the company cars, and it doesn't matter if the cars are used or not. I would pay the tax and social security contributions on the mileage driven through my salary. Does that mean you would have to record your trips in a logbook? Yes, it does. What do you think? Let me see. It would certainly be an alternative to your initial proposal of a 10% pay raise. I admit that this would be helpful. I'm glad to hear that. Dwight, you have obviously researched the proposals in detail, and I can see the advantages to both you and the Nakatomi Corporation. We have two possibilities. But could you imagine a third one, such as an intensive language course financed by the company? As head of international sales, it would be a good idea to brush up on your Spanish and French that would certainly help you in daily business, wouldn't you agree? Yes, I would have to agree. The course can be set off against taxes, can it? It can indeed. Does that mean you have looked at that possibility as well? Now, that would be giving away my secrets, wouldn't it? <laughs> I know what you mean. Mr. Yamamoto, so far we have established three alternatives, which both of us seem to be quite happy with in comparison with my original proposal, which you rejected. I think it's time we settle for one, don't you? Well, yes, I do. Dwight, all of these options have advantages for both you and Nakatomi. We favor the language courses because of the benefits to daily business. That they are tax deductible is an added bonus. In addition, the course will also help to secure your position as head of international sales and boost your ability to deal directly with our French and Spanish partners. Okay, that's settled then. 4% and a company financed language course. I'm really quite pleased that we were able to work things out, Mr. Yamamoto. So am I, Dwight. I'll get my secretary to forward the details to you as soon as possible. Just to sign the form and return it by fax. You can start having a look for suitable language schools now. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. Bye then. Goodbye. Unit 6, Exercise 1. Gilbert here. Is that Maurice Bale? Yes, sir. Bale here. This situation is totally unacceptable. It is a pollution disaster. Uh, I am sorry, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, could you clarify that, please? Uh, pollution disaster? The pollution is at acceptable levels. Acceptable? How can you say that? Uh, let me make sure I understand what you are saying. Do you mean that the factory is doing something against the law? Yes. No country allows such a high level of pollution. You don't have a clue. Our experts say that people die from these chemicals every year. You know, we're the ones who are paying for these games, but we will not release the money yet. We call the shots here. But, Mr. Gilbert, uh, I can assure you that the pollution level has been going down for the past three years. Uh, where did you get your information from? Ha! Huh. I'll go over your head. Let me speak to your superiors. I have friends in high places. Mr. Gilbert, I am the mayor, and my superiors are the townspeople. How can we solve this problem together? Do you really think we can bring 2,000 young athletes to your polluted town? The games must definitely be moved. 
You're just not in the loop. Didn't you know the factory has a large new order for dangerous ant poison? It seems it'll be working overtime all through the summer. I am afraid we cannot move the games. Have you spoken to Mr. Bennett about this? After all, he is your co-sponsor, and he has agreed to cover half the costs. Oh, and, and uh, please, ask your expert to contact me, and I will explain everything to him. Uh, in the meantime, I'll try and find out about this new order. Hmm, how strange. The factory usually closes for two to three weeks in August. To tell you the truth, I'm not interested in your excuses. We have to make sure the games are safe. If not, the whole thing will be a non-starter. Please understand, we cannot take any risks. Mr. Gilbert, let's not forget two important things here. The games have already been organized, and the company employs 50% of our population. Therefore, the games can definitely not be moved. Ridiculous! It must be possible to do something. I'll get back to you. The man just doesn't get the message. Goodbye, Mr. Gilbert. Unit 6. Exercise 6. Hello, Maurice. Bonjour, Simon. I am so pleased you could see me at such short notice. No problem at all, and... Uh... I'm sorry to hear about your difficult conversation with Mr. Gilbert. Come and sit down. Let's discuss the matter. Mr. Gilbert was rather rude. I am happy I didn't lose my temper. Mm. How is the factory? Mr. Gilbert mentioned a new contract. Fine. The factory's inspector thinks we've been making good progress with the new machines. Nevertheless, some of the old machines are still dirty and we will, unfortunately, still need to use them in the summer. Our goal is, however, to produce the amount in the contract by the end of August in order to allow time for shipping. And does this mean the company will not shut down during the student summer games? Unfortunately, yes. I'm not in a position to shut the factory down because we must achieve our targets. It is, in fact, company policy to close loss-making subsidiaries. But uh, the company is uh, profitable, isn't it? Well, we have been losing money for the last three years, and this can't continue. What do you suggest I do? <sighs> I'm not sure. But from my experience, the best way is to set up flexible working schedules which allow day and night shifts. Or, better still, change the delivery schedule for the goods to a later date. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to change it because head office has signed the contract. Oh, I appreciate your position. But can you offer any alternatives? Mm, to be honest, I'm not really certain now. You know we need this order to keep people employed. Yes, I completely understand what you're saying. But uh, as far as the TV company is concerned, they will not sponsor the games if we cannot reduce the pollution. Can you offer any alternatives? How important is it for you that the work is done in Dyersville? Well, we have no alternative, Morris. The work must be done here. Moving it is not an option. This is a head office directive. And, Simon, you would use the old machines, too. Mm. I must say, I am very dissatisfied with that solution. However, I understand your position. Well, uh, I need to get back to my office and give the whole thing some thought. Perhaps you could contact your head office again and explain to them the situation with the American TV company. Unit 6, Exercise 12 We really have to solve this matter now. They all want to make their points. I agree, and I think we should let them. However, I think our head office have come up with a good solution. They found a way to build a golden bridge. 
It will mean spending some money, but ah,、uh, that is excellent.、Uh, tell me more.、Um, later, Morris. Later. It's not confirmed yet. We're also arranging for a pollution survey, so please see that people cooperate with the testers.、Uh, what do you mean? Well, the university will be sending some students to take measurements and samples, and you'll have a full report by Friday. I'll give everyone more details at the meeting. That's great, but uh, Simon. Uh, What if the report is bad,、uh, Morris? Let's not worry about that now. Set your meeting for Friday, and I'll be there. Unit Seven, Exercise One. Nice to see you again, Mr. Fisher. I hope all is well. Yes, thank you for asking. Fortunately, I was able to speak to my client yesterday. And he is happy with the agreement so far. Is there anything that we still need to discuss? Well, there is. Afterwards, I spoke to my partners, and we came to the conclusion that we really don't want to include fitted kitchens and garden sheds in the entire project. After all, if about half of the houses have them, that's enough. We think it's just money we don't need to spend. Oh, I'm sure we can find a solution here. I have no doubt that my client will be open to considering this last-minute change. Let me just call him. Yes. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I'll call you back later then. Bye. I had hoped to be able to come to an agreement with my client. And fortunately, I have.、Yeah. If we sign the contract today, he is willing to add in the price of the kitchens and the garden sheds in the purchase price. It is an extremely good offer. Would you like to discuss it with your partners first?、Uh, yes. Just give me a moment. I need to send them a text message because they're in a meeting themselves. Ah,、uh, done. Would you like some coffee?、Uh, yes, please. It's unfortunate that my partners are unable to be here today, but、uh, oh, that was quick.、Uh, here's the answer. Well, we are willing to work with that. Excellent. I am very pleased. It's a deal then. Okay, so let's have coffee and then. Unit Seven, Exercise Five. The discussion continues. Right now. Let's get back to business and bring this negotiation to a head. Yes, let's. I must say, all in all, we've covered a lot of ground in the past two weeks, haven't we? Yes, we certainly have. Well, do you think that we'll be able to take possession of the houses within eight months? Hmm. I can assure you that my client is true to his word, and you will be able to start work on the project by the agreed date. Brilliant. Uh, but can we make a note of that in the contract? Let's approach this another way then. So far, we have established that for the sum of two point five million, the properties in the Holland Drive development include in the purchase price a fitted kitchen and a garden shed per house. In addition, the handover date we've agreed to is the first of June. Finally, the contract is to be drawn up today and signed by both parties early this evening. This should cover all the details.、Uh, just to make sure, let me repeat, if I may. Sure. Two point five million kitchens and garden sheds included, and the date of handover is the first of June. Right? Yes, absolutely right. Let's draft the contract based on these points for signature later today. I suggest we meet again at around 4:30 p.m. to continue. Does that suit you? Yes, it does. I'll see you in a couple of hours then. Great. I'll have all the papers ready, and then we can. Unit Seven, Exercise Eight. Thank you for your patience today, Mr. Fisher. I really appreciate it. No problem, Mr. Clark. We both know that this was necessary. Have you drawn up the contract? Yes. Would you like to go through it once more? No, not really. I only want to look at the changes we've discussed today, and then I'll sign the document. Oh, um, has your client signed it already? Yes. And if you turn to the last page, his signature is right there. Hmm. Oh yes. Thank you. Okay. Um. Give me a moment, please. 
Uh... Right, yes, uh, I'm happy with that. Congratulations, Mr. Fisher. This contract signifies the successful conclusion of a lot of hard work over the past couple of weeks. Well, it does, doesn't it? My partners and I are very pleased as well. So, um, so what happens now? When we have finalized the contract, we will submit it to the relevant authorities. I know this may sound a bit impatient, but we would be grateful if you could implement this by the end of the week. Mr. Fisher, I guarantee you that you will be hearing from us by Thursday at the very latest. I hope that meets with your approval. Of course. Then we can guarantee access to the project site any time we like, can we? Yes, you can. In fact, you can go next Monday. Well, it has been a pleasure. Yes, it has. I also speak for my partners when I say thank you for having us. So, what is the plan for this evening, then?